Hello, my name is David and welcome back to my channel. Tonight I'm going to continue what has been uh, a series of videos that I've started called The Ideal Bookshelf. Uh, and in this series I consider what books I would intentionally go out of my way to obtain if I was trying to build a shelf that I wanted as a, not just something that I would want to read and move on from, but something I would want to invest myself in. Um, so I'm investing my time in looking up what volumes would go on here. I'm spending time considering intentionally what I would prioritize over all other things. And I'm doing these in 10 book segments, uh, so to speak, uh, as I'm considering things. And tonight I'm doing classics. That's right. And choosing just 10 was hard. Um, I easily came up with a list of 15 with very little additional thought. I added five more, considered doing 20, and then decided to throw that out uh, and just do 10 and save the other 10 for a future video. And this one is hard to do uh, because there's so many that could make that cut. And so choosing just 10 that I will want, would want to have on my shelf can be a challenge. You can see behind me a couple of classics that I own that did not make this list. Um, of those, I've only read one, and that would be Dracula. I have not read the Norton Critical edition of Dracula there, but uh, I have read Dracula itself, and it's something I plan to revisit at some point in time. It does not make this list. So let's just dive right into the 10 that did make the cut and what version I went with, and most of these, thankfully, uh, the struggle was not choosing a good translation, more so as just a good edition, because most of these are not translated, although there are a few where I did have to give some consideration between translation and the ideal edition itself. So the first one that's on this list, and this is the only one that I actually have the right edition for is Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. Uh, this is the, I think my number one Victorian era novel. Um, I say I think because I, I haven't read enough of them, but I remember that this is the one that above all others I loved tremendously coming out of a semester of just reading Victorian literature for a class. I read some other excellent ones, one of which will be on this list. Uh, I'm going to talk about next, but uh, Victorian era, Jane Eyre is the, the the top of what I've got so far. And again, I'm hoping to get some good Victorian lit recommendations from two of my booktube friends that are both really uh, very knowledgeable about the Victorian era to put onto my Victober uh, reading list. So the second book on this list is Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte. Now, the consideration that uh, I would have had was there, there's a volume out there that has all of the Bronte sister novels. And as tempting that, as that is, just like the Jane Eyre, I would want the Norton Critical Edition on both of these. And that's not because the, there's anything wrong with the text but because what comes after the text with all of the, the different commentary and the letters and everything else that it brings in there, which make these uh, a good reference point, not just for reading the work itself, but if I wanted to teach the work, I would then have other source material to pull upon to supplement what I'm going to be talking about with these, because I do teach English, so I will have opportunities to teach this type of literature, hopefully at some point in time. And so uh, you can't do much worse than the two Bronte novels right here if you're looking at Victorian era literature. If you haven't ever read any, you want a good starting point. These are the two that I would tell you to, to go pick up. Others may differ, but both of these made Kate Howe's uh, top 10. And she's read over 100 Victorian novels because she counted down her top 100. Um, so that, that should tell you that these are pretty darn good. Um, and there's a lot that I still need to read. Next, we have 
what would what was the first one to come in on the list? But uh, I opened Amazon tabs to to get everything all open and ready. And this is one that I've seen a lot of people read for the first time. There's yet another reading of this going on, starting up for this year. And I couldn't be more excited that a lot of people are reading this right now, regardless of how their opinions land on this book. And that is The Count of Monte Cristo by Alexander Dumas. This is top five, maybe top ten at worst books for me. It is one that I read first in high school, absolutely fell in love with it, reread it about five years ago, and still absolutely love the book. Um, I, I can't recommend it highly enough. It is fantastic. Do not get the abridged version. There's no need for that. Uh, it does not fall into the pitfalls of something like Moby Dick where the extra chapters have no relevance to the story. Um, there, there's plenty and there's a lot of beats in there. Yes, he wrote this at a time when it was being released in installments and so he was getting paid by these installments, he would want to keep the readers going. He, you can find where some of those cliffhangers are in there, but it's all outstanding. Uh, it's a long read, but it's worth it. And the edition that I would go with is the Penguin Classic Edition on this one. Uh, I've heard that the translation in there is done well. Uh, it also contains uh, an introduction, explanatory notes, suggestions for further reading, things like that. Uh, so Robin Buss, uh, the translation by Buss is really good. It's an unabridged version and that's very important to me. Um, and let's face it, the Penguin Classics with that nice little black, uh, that, that, that's a very wonderful look on the bookshelf. And that that is the edition I would want. Now let's shift gears to another book that is equally excellent, a little below Count of Monte Cristo, one that I definitely need to reread soon. And that's The Three Musketeers by Alexander Dumas. Um, yes, I'm double dipping here. I thought of triple dipping, and I'm kind of triple dipping here. Um, I wish there was a good set of Penguin Classics for this, but uh, from what I can find, Oxford World Classics has all of the... Um, series of books around this. I've only read Three Musketeers and The Man in the Iron Mask. There's a whole lot of others, I think four or five total beyond those two that are all interconnected and I would love to just embark upon reading all of those in order um, at some point in time. And it looks like Oxford World Classics has all of them. So that's why I went with Oxford World Classics for those and I'm counting it as just one entry on this. Um, because the, the, the one that is the must-have is the uh, Three Musketeers, but it would include all of the others with it, because why wouldn't you? Why? Why? They're all good. Dumas is one of my favorite authors. Next, we have 1984 by George Orwell. This is fantastic. Regardless of the picture of what it portrays, for what he predicted for the future and how eerie it can be at times reading it and looking at our how our society has gone since then and seeing how close he was on some of his guesses. This is just a fantastic story through and through. If you, so if, even if you ignore all of the prediction of this dystopian world and just take it as a, a story for entertainment value, it is top notch. Uh, one of my favorites, I've read it multiple times over the course of my life. It shares its title with my birth year. And the edition I landed on is a hardcover because I would wear it out if it was a paperback because it's that good. And this one includes Animal Farm with it. And so that would be a two for one. You can't get much better bang for your buck than picking up the two of these for a little over 15 bucks. Uh, that's Yes, please. I, I would love to have those on my shelf. Next, we have Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. This is a classic. If you only know Frankenstein from movies and from popular media culture, you don't know Frankenstein. Read this book. The edition that I landed on is the new annotated Frankenstein that came out just a couple years ago. And so this has 
200 illustrations. It's got a thousand annotations throughout, which seems mind boggling considering Frankenstein itself is like a 200 page book. Um, so let's see here. This one contain, considers the original 1918 text, but also traces the effects of the revisions that the author made in 1823 and 1831. So it's outstanding. Um, yeah, I really, really want this one for my shelf. I, I need to revisit Frankenstein. It's been many, many years. And I know it was just one of my absolute favorite reads the year I read it. So that would be why I would want the annotated Frankenstein on my shelf. And so let's keep annotation going. I don't have the annotated version. Right now all I have is this uh, pitiful Norton critical edition of Adventure of Alice in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll. I don't want this. This is garbage. I want the annotated Alice. This isn't actually garbage. I like this edition a lot. Uh, but the Annotated Alice is a deluxe edition. It's nice hardcover. It's got Alice in Wonderland and Through the Looking Glass, which I'm pretty sure this does too, but it also contains some poems from Lewis Carroll. Um, over 100 new or updated annotations since the previous, so this is multiple versions of this annotated version of Alice in Wonderland have appeared. This deluxe anniversary edition that you'll find on the shelf, linked down below. Um, yeah, it's got a whole bunch. It's got a bunch of illustrations. It's good. It's going to be great. So Alice in Wonderland, love the story. Absolutely love it. Jabberwocky is one of my favorite poems, which is not Alice in Wonderland, but it's by the same author. If you haven't read Alice in Wonderland, again, if all you ever know of it is through the movies, Disney or otherwise, you owe yourself to read Alice in Wonderland. It's not a long book, and it is a delightful, delightful read. So we have three left. Let's go back to Norton Critical here. And talk Don Quixote. Yes, Don Quixote de la Mancha. Fantastic character. Fantastic book. It is a lengthy book. And I did a lot of searching to see if there was a definitive translation. And there are some translations that are considered better than others, but nothing that really has anything beyond a good translation. And so I decided to go with the Norton Critical Edition because of everything that Norton Critical adds in addition to the text. And it contains Burton Raffle's translation. And I've got some other Burton Raffle translations. I think that uh, I'm actually reading a... Yes, so... I've got a Beowulf translated by Burton Raffle that I'll probably be reading in September when I'm reading Beowulf for the 857th time and enjoying it every time. But uh, Don Quixote, if you haven't read it, it's wonderful. Uh, and again, don't go for an, uh, an abridged version, just like Count of Monte Cristo. Uh, there's nothing in there that really needs to be trimmed down. It, what, what you would sacrifice is story beats uh, rather than just extra informational chapters. So I, I see no reason to desire cutting it down at all. So we've got two more. We're going to try to go through this because it's it's late for me. I'm, I'm exhausted, but I wanted to make this uh, appear so that I could get it up Saturday at some point in time in the day for all of you to watch. So let's talk about The War of the Worlds by H.G. Wells. This is a classic in science fiction. It is outstanding story. Uh, it was just reviewed by Michael over at Fit to be Read. And uh, he says it, it is definitely fit to be read, and I couldn't agree more. Uh, War of the Worlds is a classic. And again, if you only know of it through word of mouth, you're missing out on such a great experience. And... When looking at this, I could have gone with just a nice trade paperback. There's some good additions. Penguin Classics undoubtedly has a great one. But what I landed on 
is Barnes and Noble has a nice leather bound hardcover edition of this that contains not just War of the Worlds, but also some other excellent ones that I can vouch for, as well as some that I've never read. So it includes The Time Machine, which is excellent. The Island of Dr. Moreau, which is fantastic. War of the Worlds, First Men in the Moon, Food of the Gods. It, it's great. Um, it says that they've got six on here, or that it's supposed to have six novels. Oh, the, did I say The Time Machine? It was either Time Machine or The Invisible Man that didn't get mentioned. So The Invisible Man, I missed The Invisible Man in there. Invisible Man, which is also excellent. Um, so six novels, Time Machine, Island of Dr. Moreau, Invisible Man, War of the Worlds, First Men in the Moon, and The Food of the Gods. Two of those I haven't read, but I don't doubt that even if I didn't enjoy those, I would want to have this volume for the four that I have read and that I know are excellent. H.G. Wells, uh, great writer, definitely makes the list because it's definitely classic at this point in time. And so that brings us to number 10. And th this book is probably the number two or number three if I were ranking them in terms of uh, a top 10. So Count of Monte Cristo is for sure number one. And then it would be maybe Jane Eyre or maybe Fahrenheit 451 by Ray Bradbury. Spoiler alert, I'm reading every book by Ray Bradbury. This is coming up fairly soon for me. I think it's September that I'll be reading Fahrenheit 451. If you think I'm not going to like this book, you're wrong. Um, I'm going to love it. I'm going to cherish every single moment of it. It is easily one of my favorite books of all time. Um, Count of Monte Cristo is a top 10. This is probably a top 10 for me too. Um, I, I've read it probably five or six times in my life. It's a short read. It's 200 and some pages, I think. Uh, it, it's outstanding. I, I can't recommend it enough. The idea of a world where books are being burned frightens me because I don't want my books to get burned. But what he does with that idea is so phenomenal and such an entertaining read. I can't recommend it highly enough. If you haven't read it, I'll, you'll have plenty of notice because it'll be on the monthly TBR when I'm getting ready to read it. Read it with me. I'd love to have you join along because it is going to be well worth your time. And the edition of this I would want to pick up is actually coming out September 7th. So if September truly is when I'm going to be reading this, I might be picking up this edition, this volume. And this is the Library of America, Ray Bradbury, Novels and Story Cycles. So this is coming out September 7th. You can pre-order it right now for hardcover. And this is going to have The Martian Chronicles, which I just reread. Still a five-star read for me. Fahrenheit 451, Dandelion Wine, Something Wicked This Way Comes. I've read all of those. I strongly recommend all four of those. They are fantastic. And I'm excited to reread the three that I have not reread this year. And I think all of them are coming up in this point in the year, um, before the end of this year, which would be, I mean, you can't ask, you can't ask for better reading than this. So Ray Bradbury rounds us out Fahrenheit 451. So there's my 10 classics, 10 of them. And I could easily do another 10. I could probably do another 10 after that without breaking much of a sweat. After that, I'd probably start getting into areas where I just need to reread in order to know better or actually read, as three of those out back behind me would testify, uh, read some more of those. For this list, I didn't really consider anything that was medieval literature or earlier, because otherwise I'd have the Odyssey and the Iliad. I'm going to have specific ones for that, uh, for, for ancient literature texts and medieval literature texts, so I felt like... This should probably be something that's at least a little more modern so that all of you that don't like to read anything written before 1800 uh, or even 1900 can have something that you say, oh yeah, okay, I'm interested in reading that. Uh, or, hey, I've read that too. So there's my top 10 classics. And obviously uh, the first list had Lord of the Rings, which would make this list 
of classics if it wasn't on that. And it had the complete Sherlock Holmes, which again would make this list if it wasn't already on that one. Um, so yeah, that, that's my 10. What would be some of your top 10 classics that you would put and uh, additions if there's particular volumes or collections that you particularly like? Let me know. Leave a comment. Share some links. Um, I'd love to see them. So thank you for watching and have a great day.